Hey guys, Adam here of ADZ Body Fitness. So today, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we are going to go through some exercises, but it's going to stem from something that uh, actually has plagued enough people and has actually plagued me as well. Have you guys ever heard of the term scoliosis? I'm sure some of you have, maybe some of you haven't. In today's video, we're going to discuss scoliosis, how you can do some exercises to help strengthen your back, and also my backstory to how it affected me and how I also got over it as well. So, so what is scoliosis? Scoliosis is essentially the curvature of your spine. It comes down, curves out to the side, and then comes back and straightens out and then goes back down to the bottom of your back. And it essentially creates imbalances in your back and everywhere else in your body. Um, why does this happen? They actually don't know. There's the, the, the doctors don't actually understand why this happens to your body, what causes it. If you have scoliosis, you know that this can be a really big pain in your life. Because depending on how severe yours is, how many degrees yours turned, um, you can have trouble sleeping, uh, all kinds of, you know, you can have back pain, hip pain, um, shoulder pain, all kinds of like different areas of your body throughout the entire day. If you don't work out and you don't do any sort of uh, fitness regimen whatsoever, it can be even worse. If you don't stretch, you're going to feel it a lot more too, especially if you don't foam roll as well. Um, so people who do have scoliosis, it, you'll understand 100% on how bad this can affect your life. Because, you know, when your spine keeps rotating and it twists, it causes other areas of your body to be imbalanced, right? So imagine, like I was explaining earlier, how your spine comes straight, turns out, and it comes back straight. That's pushing muscles on the side, on one side of your body to the other side. So first off, they're going to be essentially weaker when you're doing any sort of lifting or if you're going to work and you have a strenuous job, you're going to find it a little bit more difficult to perform certain tasks. And then the other side has to compensate, right? So one side is compensating for the other and the other side is working harder because it's compensating. So it's, it's and then eventually your muscles, they give out. Like you pull something, you, you get shoulder pain. I know for me, um, I generally pull, so my right trap will essentially just um, not give out, but I'll wake up one day with uh, pain in my in the right side of my back, in the middle part of my trap, essentially around my, my rhomboid area. Um, and I'll take a roughly around two to three days for it to, to go away. Now, as I got older, it did get better because I did progress through fitness, um, and I progressed uh, in, in my workouts and, and through bodybuilding, which, which helped tremendously, and also my eating as well. So in this video, I, I'm going to go through some workouts that you can do to help strengthen your back um, in order to basically help deal with the pain and also help with your posture and also over time help to, uh, help to strengthen your, your muscles that can better support your spine. Uh, there's no cure to this, so if uh, you're ever looking for a cure or any sort of way to, to straighten your spine, other than surgery, which uh, a lot of doctors don't recommend, there's there's no way to, to to straighten it out. Unfortunately, it sucks. That's just the way it is. They haven't found one yet. Um, they haven't come across anything more than what they have right now, which is essentially wearing a brace and stopping your body from uh, progressing even more with its degrees. The only things that you can do is to basically work out, stretch, eat nutritionally, and uh, keep doing this consistently every day. Uh, I've been doing this for the past, uh, it's been over 10 years now that I've been working out and it's the one thing that's helped to really reduce my, my back pain and my hip pain as well. So as you're going to see here, I'm actually going to put up some photos. There's two photos. So the first one here is of my, my back and uh, what I'm showing you here is the curvature of my spine and what it looks like. Now when you do an x-ray, it always looks a little bit worse than what it is. It's not exactly that curved, it, it's a little bit more... Uh, exaggerated in the x-ray than what it actually is, is going to look like but um, it gives you an idea of, of what how the spine or what the spine turns into when you're dealing with scoliosis um, and then in the second picture right here is um, an area of my hip so 
my left hip is a slightly elevated by a few millimeters in my right. And the reason why is because when your spine rotates, it not only is it pushing it out of their places and it's causing imbalances, but it's also causing the opposite side to raise a little bit more. So essentially your body is turning. So let's say for example, I'll do it, I'll show you right now on the camera. If my spine were to keep turning and turning and turning and turning over the course of months and years, my body would essentially go like this. So one side of my uh, hip would raise higher, my shoulder would raise, my chest would pop out a little bit more and slightly go higher, and it would affect just all areas of my body. In order to stop this from happening, as some of you know, they put you in a body brace, which is literally like from here to here, which you have to wear until you stop growing because that's when your spine stops turning, right? Um, and that's the only way to, to keep it from getting worse. What they do is they provide you with stretches, doctors will provide you with stretches first, and if that's not working, then they give you a brace right away. So for me, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, I remember when I first found out, my mom actually saw that my, you can't really notice it now, and even if I have my shirt off, you can't even see it, but my uh, my abdominals, my, my left side was actually, it was sticking out like a little bit more than my right. So we went to the doctor, and then he checked me out. It was just a normal walking doctor, and he looked at my spine, and he's like, I think you have, you might be, uh, you might have scoliosis and I was, I was like I was 14 years old and what the hell is that scoliosis and then he explained what it was and I was just like oh shit that sounds pretty bad <laughs> and uh, as he was explaining it a bit further in my mind because I was young I was just like ah you know I'll get over it whatever at the time I was doing martial arts uh, and I was just doing you know push-ups sit-ups and and pull-ups at home and I was you know working out anyways um, so we booked in a uh, spot with the specialist at the at, uh, at the hospital and I remember going there and when we went there he basically said that uh, you know you're gonna have to see a chiropractor first you're gonna have to do stretches hopefully it deals with the degrees of the spine and it keeps it from turning but if it doesn't you're gonna have to wear something like this and he showed me uh, a body brace and I was just like oh man I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to wear that especially when you're in high school you don't want to go into high school wearing something like that this clunky like body armor looking thing in, uh, in front of everybody at school, especially at that age when you're trying to impress people, you're trying to gain friends and some sort of a community with everybody else. So I was just like, no, I, I gotta make this work. So I remember I would go, uh, so I ended up going to see a friend of the family who's a chiropractor who sadly ended up passing away. He actually ended up showing me a lot of um, exercises and things to do to, to help with uh, scoliosis and also even taught me quite a few things with the body as well, but he gave me the stretches that I needed to do. I would go to him for therapy. I did that for about six months or so. So I found out when I had scoliosis, it was anywhere roughly around between, it was, I think it was around 14 and a half because I was already in high school. And then I went to him. So I did that roughly for about six months. So let's say I was 15 or so, a little bit over 15. Um, and then I realized that I just, I just, I didn't feel right. I felt like things were getting worse internally, right? I just didn't feel that, uh, um, it's, it's hard to explain unless you're going through it. I just, it's like I felt things slowly uh, shifting over time though, over a period of time. Like I would start to get different pains in my body. Um, I felt like I could see the increase in the rise of my shoulder. And when we went to the hospital, I ended up being right because the, um, the, um, the head doctor, the specialist, he said that, you know, although it's, because they can track, sorry, should have explained this earlier, they can track your, your spine and how it gets worse in the, the way it moves. So the amount of degrees that it turns, right? And he said that it's actually gotten a bit worse and it seemed to have slowed down from before, but uh, it, it's, it's not helping 100%. So they gave me a few more months and he said, if it doesn't stop, then you're gonna have to put me in a body brace. So. Long story short, it was the same thing. I went back to do the exercises every day for about 15 minutes, continued to work out. But lo and behold, I had to wear a body brace, couldn't get away from it. And uh, I just remember like my worst fear came true. I'm like, man, how the hell am I gonna wear this in high school? Like everybody's gonna make fun of me, they're gonna look you, all these things are going through your head, you feel insecure. So I ended up getting a body brace casted from, uh, literally from my neck. So the top of my chest, all the way down to my hip area. So pretty much down here. Um, and I had to wear 23 hours a day. I was allowed to take it off one hour a day just to shower and then to do my stretches, not even to just take it off and feel comfortable. 
And I remember the specialist was very strict and he's like, you have to wear it every day for 23 hours. Want to keep, if you want it to keep your spine from twisting and getting even worse. And I said, 23 hours a day? I'm like, this is friggin', it's, it's like torture. And I remember um, being there with my dad and my dad was just like, you know, unfortunately sometimes you just have to do things that you don't want to do, right? Just trying to basically make it easier for me. But, you know, I'm glad that I did that because at the end of the day, my spine, it kept my spine from getting worse. And uh, it also structured my body from when I started to bodybuild and, and, and strength lift later on. But I remember wearing that and going to school for a period of time and it was just, it was terrible. Some, you know, kids can be cruel, they make fun of you, they say things about you, they talk behind your back, but it is what it is. You know, you're younger, you go through these things, you get over it and, and you deal with it and then you move on, right? But, uh, but yeah, so anybody who's had like a moderate to severe scoliosis has had to wear a brace. And I had to wear that for about two years. So closer to the end of high school, I remember going for a checkup. So I had to go get a checkup done every, roughly every three to six months it was just to monitor it to see how it was doing. And uh, I remember it was the time before I got it off, the specialist said, well, things are looking good. He's like, your growth spurt is uh, essentially declining. You're not getting really any taller. So it looks like you can you can uh, take it off. If everything goes smooth, you can take it off the next time you come here. And I was so relieved. I was just like, oh my God, no more of this shit. I can take it off. I can feel normal again. I can move around. Like, I'm not like a robot. And this thing was like, it was it, it was about half an inch thick or so. That's how thick this thing was because it really needed to ensure that it was squeezing your your abdomen and your ribs and your your obliques in total and then the side of your chest and it needed to make sure that it was pressing it in to stop your 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 um your spine from rotating and if you can you know you can just picture and imagine wearing this thing like this your arms are out here you're walking like this there's a piece of plastic sticking from the top it's not going to be very comfortable it's not going to be very visually appealing either there's going to be people that are going to look at you and say like what the hell is he wearing? What is that? Especially back then, because um, when I actually had uh, gotten mine, I was one of the um, one of the closer, not not one of the first, but I was one of the first, I guess, group of people that was just wearing them uh, in Canada. So, you know, nobody had really seen these around before, and then the 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 amount of the the people that had seen it was like very small so you, it's not like you'd come across a lot of people that say oh you know he's wearing a back brace like I understand they'd be like no what the hell is that what's wrong with him is his body broken like why is he why does he look like that so I remember going there and then he said that wore it for a little bit longer went to the doctor again and then I just remember him saying you know now's the time you could take it off you know you stop growing and you know, everything's good. You don't have to wear it anymore. And I was so relieved. I'm like, oh my God, finally, things can go back to normal. And at the time, I was just getting into weightlifting. I was just discovering weightlifting, just picking up weights, doing basic uh, bicep curls. Um, I was involving it more in my stretching and in my routines to help strengthen my back when I would take off the brace for an hour. So, and I was enjoying it. I was actually liking it. So now I remember saying I can actually... Um, uh, actually weightlift now like I can do heavier weight and I remember asking him and I said so now I'll, I'll actually be able to will I be I will I be able to actually do heavier weight will I be able to actually weightlift and I remember him saying he's like you can work out and use light weights but you won't be able to lift heavy it's not going to be good for your spine because it is uh, a, a number of degrees uh, rotated um, I wouldn't suggest doing that and you shouldn't strength lift and I was I remember just sitting there and I'm just like Seriously, like I finally got this damn thing off. I had to go through, you know, a number of things with uh, dealing with people in high school and then, you know, poking fun at you and then getting over the security of it and just being, um, having self esteem, bringing it back up. They're telling me I can't weight lift, I can't lift heavy. I'm like, what the hell? So I remember being bummed out at the time about it because I'm like, this guy's a doctor, he's a professional, he's obviously going to know more than I am. Like, I'm going to listen to him. So, uh, um, you know, what am I going to do? And then I just remember thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to make a decision for myself. I'll see how it goes from here. At the time, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking anyways, I'm essentially, you know, taking, uh, taking a risk because I, you know, I'm going against the professional or a professional's orders who's been in the field for so long, knows a lot more than I have, so I could potentially hurt myself. That's what I was thinking. 
But at the end of the day, I don't know, there was something inside me that I just didn't agree with him. I was like, why, you know, lifting weights is therapy. At the time, I was just like, it builds you up. If you take it step by step, you do progressive overload uh, according to what you can handle. Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it help? I mean, I'm still standing here. I know uh, at the end of the day, my spine is, it's curved, but why wouldn't I be able to handle it? And then needless to say, over time, I proved them wrong. I started lifting well beyond my means. I went from 150... Uh, 150 to 155 pounds now I'm around 195 to 200 I lifted uh, I strength lift all the time and I never had an issue I built my foundation way past what it was before I've put on a lot of muscle um, I'm stronger I'm more flexible I have good mobility the pain still come and go you'll never be able to get over that 100% but you know it's not what it was when I was first starting out um, my postures it's better than ever so needless to say if you've ever been told the same thing, it's not true. You can still strengthen your body, you can still put on muscle, you can still lift heavy weights if you do it in a smart way and you make sure you do it in a way that's not going to compromise your health, right? So with this video, what I wanted to do is, is I wanted to show you a few back exercises that helped strengthen my back and also helped put on muscle and support my spine um, from when I was... Uh, younger to, to, to my age now, which is over 10 years. Now again, some of these exercises, I know you've seen them done before, they're nothing special, but it's how you perform them, which is the most crucial and, and important thing. It's how you perform them, and then how you apply them to your workout. If you're somebody who doesn't work out, I would highly suggest that you do work out, not even just doing these, these uh, back exercises, but I would put physical fitness into your routine every day and I would start eating healthier if you're not because it is going to make a world of a difference not right away things take time it's not going to be a quick fix you, it, it'll start to take shape within a month or a couple months or so and then over time and the more you do it you get better at it you'll start to get less pain you'll become more flexible you have more mobility and you'll just feel all around a lot better and you'll psychologically feel better about yourself too because there are some people where they have uh, really severe scoliosis um, they have like really bad kyphotic curves, which is like essentially um, the uh, middle part of your back rounding out like this. And they have tons of pain to deal with all the time. I used to deal with them when I was uh, a physio assistant at the uh, old gym I used to work at. Some of them would just be popping Tylenol all day because they didn't know anything else to do with the, with the pain that they were receiving. So then when they would come to me, I would help them out. And to be honest with you, for some of them, it was too late. It was really hard to get them to where they wanted to be with where they're at. It was essentially, with their flexibility, it was like pulling crowbars, uh, it was like untangling crowbars away from each other because of how tight they were over the years of them not doing anything. Needless to say, you can still do something about it, but you just have to start and you have to start now. So I'm gonna make this a series. This isn't gonna be the only video on it because I've gone through this myself, I've experienced it, I've done certain things to help with my uh, scoliosis over the years. Um, there's going to be a number of videos on it that I'm going to go through, but just for this one, it's just going to be exercises um, that you can do at home uh, that are going to be effective and that's going to help you essentially put on a bit more muscle, give you a sense of more mobility and flexibility, and to essentially just help you with your pain um, throughout the next few months and years. It's going to take more, I just want to let you know, it's going to take more than what you're doing here. You can start doing these today or tomorrow that'll put you on the right path to help hopefully helping you recover and getting better with uh, your scoliosis all right guys so with this exercise it's essentially just a seated row and what you want to make sure you do is when you're bringing the band back you want to pretend there's like a quarter or some sort of a penny between your shoulder blades and you want to squeeze as much as you can and retract it slowly. So you want to bring it back, squeeze, relax, back, squeeze, relax, and do that while sticking out your chest and keeping your back as straight as possible. This is going to allow you to build muscle for an exercise that's really helped me over the years to help stabilize my back. So for this exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a chair, place your hand on something that's elevated. You don't need to use a weight. You can just use nothing at all. And you're going to reach underneath and reach over, come back, and then squeeze and do a row similar to the seated row in the first exercise. You want to make sure that you're squeezing your shoulder blade against the other one as much as possible to engage it. 
and you're pulling your elbow back and away in order to cause uh, contraction. And you want to make sure you're squeezing as much as you can when you're doing this. So for this exercise, you're going to stand up at a halfway point, place the band underneath your feet, and when you pull it back, you're going to pull back and inwards towards the middle of your back, and again, squeeze your shoulder blades together. You always want to get as much contraction as possible, bring it in and hold, and squeeze as much as possible. The idea here is to twist it and bring it in towards the middle of your back as much as you can, and also in a comfortable rate, so that you can cause contraction with the middle and the upper back. All right, and the last exercise is a modified lat pull down. What you want to make sure you're doing is pulling down, bring the elbow slightly towards your body, and lean back and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Again, you want to bring it down, contract, hold, make sure that there's a quarter or a coin there between your shoulder blades and you're trying to squeeze it as much as possible. Make sure you're leaning back, contracting, and pulling the band apart as much as you can for this exercise. All right, guys, that's it for this video. As you just saw the exercises, those are some simple exercises that you can do at home to help build some back strength and muscle for uh, your scoliosis. I'm sure you've seen them before, but it's how you perform them which matters the most. You have to get a really good squeeze and a really good hold like I was explaining during each exercise. And you really have to make sure you're contracting the muscle as best as possible. You keep doing these over time, you'll strengthen your back, it'll reduce back pain, along with obviously doing stretching and foam rolling, and of course eating right, getting enough protein as well, and you will see difference over time. My whole thing is, you know, regardless of what age you are, especially if you're younger, this applies to you more, you don't want to go through the rest of your life just dealing with this back pain all the time. You can take control of it, you can do something about it. No, you will never be able to straighten your spine 100%, but you can make it better than what it is today if you just act on it. This is gonna be a series as well, so make sure you keep checking in for the next videos. The next one is going to be on essentially stretching and foam rolling and how important that is as well. Um, be sure to check in for that. Yeah, guys, if you liked the video, please subscribe, share, like, and comment. Um, download my free playbook, which is down below. It's gonna be there for every video. Um, and also, I'll see you guys in uh, the next video.